back to this episode of Transitioning Humanitarians Live with Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Ethel. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back this Thursday afternoon. Yes, so we're finalizing the topic of failure uh, that we have been discussing in so many different ways in June. So we thought of covering any other last minute uh, thoughts around uh, or strategies around failure. And that's really the conversation about this today. So Vicky, anything that we haven't covered in terms of failure that we should absolutely touch upon? Mm -hmm. um, I think we've covered a lot uh, um, in terms of failure, um, but I think as you mentioned earlier on, one of the one of the um, one of the perspectives we could explore is that what happens if we choose not to go for the project that we decided yeah. to go or not to transition in our case of transitioning humanitarians or not to go. Uh, because of the fear, because of fear of potential failing, uh, yeah. so I think that might be one of the one of the things we have forgotten uh, or we have not addressed. Um, yeah. Okay. So if we talk about like we were thinking, um, we usually tend to go into this what happens if I fail uh, logic. And, and I think that's a fair logic to think about going until the end to think through, right? So what happens if you, we don't fail, I think is the other question that we can ask, like uh, mm -hmm. Vicky was saying. And in that regard, the way that I was like coaching some of my clients and what I have experienced from my own experience as well is if I avoid failing, this is what, happens oftentimes I have seen. So I keep reinforcing my fear more. And yeah. that's not what I want to do, obviously. But then it becomes even more difficult to do something next time because I have so much like um, strength and fear that I can't do this, right? And the other one that I have seen more, therefore, is I reinforce that I can't trust myself, really. And yeah. that's the other thing that I reinforce more. And I think the biggest problem with not wanting to fail or avoiding failing is then I feel like um, I am not free, basically, meaning that I trap myself in, okay, now I can only do this thing because I better not fail here because the other thing that I'm wanting, I can't go. And therefore now this has to work. And then I create a lot of pressure there. And then I don't enjoy being in my current situation either. Then I become like this person who's like in between, right? It's like, I always think of like sitting in between two chairs, but of course you can think of many other ways of like not really being present in my current life and not being also present on going to what I want to, and then just being in this in between. And that interestingly also lead me to then think I failed anyway, even though I didn't go to the other thing, but I failed anyway because I didn't. Yeah really go and I feel coward or maybe I feel like I am not a person who can do this so then I get a lot of in this turmoil and yeah. that's not helpful either yeah yeah I mean what you what you are mentioning is an example that I think we see a lot in the aid sector and it's really even outside of the at least for myself the clients I work with um, it is real the fear of, of failing is not allowing me to go for the thing I would like yeah. to go or to, to transition. And that's really the, the core of, of, of this discussion, I believe, um, that I, the fear, the anxiety uh, of failing is so big that I, I, I say, well, um, I'm not even going to go there. And I think it's important to pay attention to what how we uh, uh, explain it to ourselves or what is the what are what is what is the mental messaging that we we convince ourselves um, because it's really coming always from a negative uh, a negative perspective as you say well um, what if I don't get the job or what if uh, I will not 
What if I get the job? What if I don't like it? Just like I don't like where I am now. So all sorts of very negative uh, uh, or sorts of already creating negative uh, results for myself or excuses of why I shouldn't even try to go there. So I think um, this is what probably stops most of the people. Um, and I think we've talked about fear a lot, the importance of understanding what, 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 the, what the fear comes from and, and, and preparing ourselves for you know all the eventualities or all the situations that might come. So in this yeah. sense, I think it's important to also look at failure um, as a part of part of the journey as real something that it's not what if, but I would rather say when, because on the journey uh, of transitioning, there will be something that is not going to go according to the plan. There will be something that it's not going to work out for the first time. You, we may need to try once, twice, three times. So um, I would rather encourage um, colleagues listening to us to say, okay, failure is a part of the journey. It's not the opposite of something, is a part of the journey. Yeah, exactly. And I was thinking also the other thing is um, if we don't choose failure or in, let's let me say it another way obviously we don't want to choose failure right because it's so difficult to process we feel shitty in the process doing it and we all like we rather not to choose it and it's like a very human experience we rather not to choose it but we also knowing like yuki was saying that knowing that this is part of our experience we may as well choose it because if we don't then the consequences that i have described now avoiding failure makes us feel failing anyway and the the part that's not nice about that is that now we're putting ourselves in the situation where we don't like what we already have we can't enjoy what we already have and therefore i mean it's matter of choice after all right so either we choose to go for what we want and then failing if we don't want to do that i i think it would be good then to remove decide not to transition but still fully being present where you are at least you make yourself a service or you make yourself um a good life or comfortable life without like tearing yourself apart inside of, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that, and I could have gone and didn't go, and all of these stories that could be running in our background, we don't need it. So therefore, if we decide that this is where we're going, though no, this is where we're staying and we're going to make best out of it, then as we may as well remove all of that um, torturing, uh, beating up, uh, yeah. like narrative that are not necessary so therefore then the important part might be okay how do i want to be present where i am how do i want to do the work that i want to and see the sense or the impact the result i want to or whatever is making me leave or was causing me to want to transition how do i remove those reasons or how do i be okay with those reasons right uh and also bearing in mind that staying where we are also may require failing as well and and then how to learn to fail in that setting at least that's in like known environment so we may know what to do with it instead of going totally to an uncertain situation and having to do with a lot of different failures what would you yeah. say? Yeah. yeah, what you're describing is, is, is very important because, um, as you say, even if we say, okay, this is too risky for me, I'm not going to transition, I don't want to fail or I'm afraid, I'm too afraid of failure, I have paranoid fear of failure. Um, and we say, okay, for now, at least, I stay where I am. As you say, it's important to, to explore all the options um, to make my stay in whatever situation I am um, acceptable for myself. Because as you say, it can be really, then you can, if you're not, if you, if you say, I'm not going to transition, but then I'm also miserable where I am. And I also feel like, okay, I, I sort of 
um, you know, I, I, I'm disappointed with myself because so I yeah. feel, as you say, is a failure. It's important to anyway rebrand or rethink or look at it as a different perspective. What is it? What is this situation? What can I sort of? Uh, how can I use this situation for myself? Is there something for me to learn or is there something for me to to explore? Because you may well say, look, fine, this is a situation that I really don't like. I don't like to be, I would like to transition, but I'm too afraid. But maybe where I'm going to requires me to learn something, requires me to acquire something. So why not use this time or why not use this opportunity to do something where I equip myself to feel better about transitioning. So yeah. I would say, yeah, look, look, looking at this from perspective of making this, this, this place where I am useful for myself. Yes. And the other thing that comes to mind when it comes to like avoiding failing or failing and then going through and to the other side, um, I have, I have used this exper like experience so many times when I have failed so many times learning languages and where I am now compared to where I was like when I started, right? And and if I had stopped at some point to say, okay, I don't want to be learning because I'm too miserable failing, like for instance, learning English or German, I'm too miserable learning and I just gave up in those moments how my life would be back then versus how it is now right and I always use this ex example for myself to say like learning going through those failures have allowed me to be in such a freedom to be communicating with so many people to have jobs that I want to to be speaking to clients I want to um, like it allowed me so much more freedom after going through that yes the process of going through was difficult but on the other side was so much worse it that I don't even like mm -hmm. second guess whether I should fail or not, right? It just feels like that's how we do things. We fail a lot, we get miserable times through this and then we go on the other side. And what if everything else in our lives was like learning a language or whatever the other example you can think of for yourself that you have managed, you have mastered to go through it like being a humanitarian right in the beginning maybe it was exciting but also so difficult to be working with so many different people from different cultures uh and following certain rules right writing in a particular way and those were very difficult but we have all gone through that gone through to the other side of being the professionals being the uh, persons who go to difficult war zones to be working so we all have this type of experience that we have gone through so many failures knowingly or not knowingly and we have gone to the other side where we feel like it wasn't even like a brainer of course i needed to go through that to be yeah. the person i am now mm -hmm. and if we think of those type of experiences how they helped us being here and and that also shows that how much we can also go the next phase and then also say, I have now gained the freedom I want, the peace I want, the whatever else that we're seeking I want. So therefore looking back, it's like no brainer. I, I happily traded, mm -hmm. right? To come to the place where I'm now. And I really want people to experience that, whatever that uh, life you're creating, where it's not something that blocks you, but rather allows you to go through and feeling proud feeling mm -hmm. free to be to have done this yeah, yeah 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 as you're speaking you know like some of the um some of my experiences came to my mm -hmm. mind like some of the some of the big failures that as i was failing it really felt bad and i think there were moments when i felt like this is the end of the world and end of my yeah. career and end of everything but looking in retrospect there was such a great lesson because it forced me to really it's it's a really i would say if i may a kick in the behind that really made me realize that um all of the things that i need to learn or all the things that i'm learning or like how much i've grown etc but um, these experiences make me think of, of two things. Other two things is that are we, two questions, 
are you or am I as an individual punishing myself for failure or am I, uh, am I allowing myself to fail so that it allows yeah, me yeah. to grow? And the second thing is really institutions and organizations, because of course we know that some organizations have a room for accepting, so to speak, failure in terms of learning new projects. And I, I, I even remember in my previous organization that um, we were starting a new project where we literally received a green light saying, go for it, try. We know that some of it will fail and that's okay. Mm. But it's, I, I do understand that maybe in certain settings there is no acceptance of failure there is like zero tolerance to failure which obviously is a is a is a situation where where no team can advance if no failure is allowed if it's really you always have to perform 100 percent. there is no such situation so i would at least like to go back into into the private one in your life to really be aware that you don't punish yourself for the failure you say that's okay i learned from it i take something from it i there is something that i'm i'm gaining from this um, as opposed to punishing yourself because if we go with the mentality well if you if you fail i'm going to punish you punish you like if i tell this to myself then of course it's a difficult difficult mindset to work in yeah and maybe also the other thing i was thinking about is that i think we think of failure also letting other people down right or mm -hmm. like letting ourselves down uh or maybe we're thinking of the people who are really in need of that assistance but because we failed we didn't really do a good job of delivering what we could and and those are i think very valid conversations about very valid reasons to be sad about to be mad about and i think we are like we're all human beings we want to do the best in those situations we want to do the most in those situations yeah. and in those moments it's also like vicky you were saying that it's easy so to be punishing ourselves right collectively or individually maybe saying out loud maybe not saying out loud and feeling so guilty about it or feeling shame about it. And in those moments, I think also the time to practice uh, forgiving, right? Forgiving for trying our best, forgiving that we, we thought things would go this way and didn't go this way. Yes, we can always learn, but maybe also the other thing that we punish ourselves a lot as humanitarians is, we have done this failure so many times, or mm -hmm. like I used to think of it definitely in my times mm -hmm. as a humanitarian that we made this mistake and again and again, and we shouldn't be making that mistake. And I think we all can agree to, yes, ideally we learn once and then we just move on to being great humans to the next phase. But I think it doesn't work that way. And I mean, I know it from my own experience. I have tried to learn so many times from failures maybe not quite learn my lesson so it happens again and in those moments i think it's so easy to just say oh i shouldn't have done this i'm not worth it or whatever whatever but i also know that going that road is not useful right so in that like on the verge of going to that road i stop myself and like okay I can do all of those things and punish myself but what's the purpose of doing it why am i doing it and if I'm not wanting to do that, then what am I going to do now to do the next thing that's to improve the next thing or to make the next thing better? Yeah. But I guess the, the lesson always is that I want to be at the end of failing, still feeling like I have done my best. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe that's like for me the important part that I want to feel that I didn't do it like half-heartedly or i didn't do it just like uh for the tick or for you know being paid or whatever right i think that's like the important part that i always want to feel and the other important part i want to feel is that even if i did fail then knowing that i wasn't afraid or even if i was afraid i did go anyway and mm -hmm. i did I wasn't shying away from feeling disappointed um, because that thing that I really wanted was so important that it was worth going for it anyway. Yeah. And I think these are the things that I want to feel whether I fail 
uh, in the end anyway, because then that gives me a comfort to say, okay, I can handle it. I can do the next thing maybe better. And maybe the other like 10% shift to the direction mm -hmm. I want to, that's still mm -hmm. better than me trying to stay where I am and not really enjoy what I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I fully agree. I think that's a, that's a very useful perspective to have. Uh, you know, let me give my all and try the best I have without expecting uh, results. That's really from my uh, my personal experience. That's what I try to apply. I'll do my best. Um, if it's really important, I'll do my best uh, without expecting uh, the results. So then, you know, uh, the results can be you know, can be 60%, can be 20%, maybe it won't work at all. Um, and frankly, I mean, it's rarely that things work. If I'm, if, if there is something that I'm doing for the first time, it rarely happens that I get it right for the first time. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's probably a matter of luck rather than a, a sort of skill and strategy. So that's why I think it's almost, almost if you look at these things statistically, um, and I know people probably don't like statistics, you know, we, we, we can't be always getting everything right for the first time. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's why I think a more reasonable or more uh, practical attitude is just, uh, yeah, let's give our best um let's try our best let's learn and try again if it doesn't work for the first time yeah exactly okay so i feel like we have covered uh enough about failure and of course if you have any questions uh you let us know um or anything specific that you're struggling with that mm -hmm. you think cannot be really solved because you have a very unique situation so you let let us know as well right Otherwise, um, Vicky, any last uh, minute words before we wrap up? I would up? just say that if, if uh, you know, if you are struggling with uh, fear of failure, or if you feel that uh, okay, my fear of failure is so huge that um, I don't really, really even know. I really need help. Do let us know, Asel and myself. We are here. We are happy to work uh, with you towards. Um, maybe not overcoming but dealing with it um you know we're not going to um we're not going to take away uh the potential failure um but i think we're gonna it's important to make it a part of life yeah exactly and i was lately thinking also how we could be um modeling this for other people around us right mm -hmm. and how we're dealing with it how we're processing it and how people around us are also seeing how we're doing it yeah. because we humans like to learn from other people's behaviors rather than the words so that's why i like to think of whatever i'm doing or not doing this is also being like seen by others so therefore they probably uh, are also learning or mm -hmm. saying this is actually what i don't want to be doing right so that's why um yeah. whatever the things that we can do differently than we thought other people were doing when we were struggling with that topic uh if we can do it differently and in a way that's better than the one that was done before i'm all for it so i I really invite people to also think of the failure and the topic of it. I think we're at this point where we're not tabooing it anymore. That's amazing. And now we can get it to the next level of us modeling a behavior of uh, not avoiding it if we don't want to, but rather going through, maybe discussing it with others as well, uh, how we did it, what did go well, what didn't, yeah. and how we can support each other in that sense as well right so that's why if we can be models for that i think that's um that's an amazing shift absolutely yeah okay so uh thank you so much for uh allowing us to talk about failures this month and we'll come with the next topic for the next month until then thank you vicky thank you all and see you next Thursday. Thank you, Asel. Thank you all. And uh, and see you next Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Bye.